bumblebees. Christian here at the hotel. Chris Chan, what's up? A YouTube personality called Chris Chan has just been arrested in Virginia on, of all things, incest charges. Authorities say Chan was having sex with his 79 year old mother who has. Oh, yeah, that's right. right. Oscar Wilde once famously said, Life imitates art far more than art imitates life. That saying is still around today, despite it first being ushered back in the 19th century. And that's because we see examples of it so often. And in perhaps one of the biggest and most twisted examples of life imitating art is with YouTuber Chris Chan and the Greek tragedy Oedipus. Many have already made the comparison, even Chris himself has. But if we want to know if Chris and Oedipus really is an example of life imitating art, and why it may just be the most sick and twisted example of this, then we must first understand who both characters are. Chris Chan is the internet's first major lol cow. The first person whose eccentric and sometimes foolish behaviour would be exploited to amuse onlookers. Chris was born male, but as of now identifies as female, and goes by the name Christine Weston Chandler, although she still calls herself Chris now and again. Chris has high functioning autism, which can cause her to struggle sometimes in social situations. Chris first became known to people online because of his comic book creation Sonichu, a cross between Sonic the Hedgehog and Pikachu. Sonichu quickly gained attention for Chris, not because it was drawn or written particularly well, it wasn't, but because of the actual content. It started off innocently enough, but quickly became about sex, violence and more sex, and in the end became a way for Chris to deal with death. When his pet dog died, Chris drew the dog into the comic, and thus he believed that his pet would now live forever in this alternative reality. He did the same when his father passed away. The Sonichu comic would become a place Chris could escape into, a place where he had powers, a better place than the real world. This would be me in my super mode. If I actually had the superpowers. Slowly over time, Chris would become more and more a part of the world, becoming its leading man, its mayor, and ultimately its goddess. The comic may not have become popular because it was any good, but that's not how Chris saw it. Mine and the first romantic attempt. And I did an awesome job. My art speaks for me. And Chris wasn't just interested in writing for himself. And Seth MacFarlane, message for you, creator family guy. Here's a silly sketch that you may use. You have my full permission to use this sketch. Now as I uh, show you the drawings, I will uh, read the lines as they are said. Alright, so we see everybody sitting on the couch. It's Ray TV 14, just like Family Guy, in this sketch only. So the skull vision says, uh, I gotta use the bathroom, excuse me. And I'm sitting on a couch and I say, eh, uh, I gotta use the can too. So we follow but so we follow us to the bathroom and it goes neutral. And then he says, uh, occupied. And then I go further down the hallway and I say, eh, uh, here's a can. So I go in. And it's like, uh, hmm, I wonder what these buttons do.
<laughs> Chris's comic may not be as popular as any Marvel or DC comic, but it did bring plenty of joy to those that read it, especially Chris. <laughs> As well as her comic book, Chris is known for filming her unique behaviour and uploading it for all to see. Simpson, Homer Simpson, he's the greatest guy in this story. From the down the Springfield, he's about to hit a chestnut tree. Ah! Sugar a fish! Would you like to make a wish? Ah! Uh, yes, hello. Is this, uh, Walter Grisby? Who's your busy? Are you know what? Ah! Ah! Mr. Thomas, you are hereby granted a Merry Christmas from your uncle, from your uncle Gubsy. Uh, my uncle Gubsy says, Merry Christmas, Tom. Gub, 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 gub. Rap! 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 Often when Chris records herself doing something most would consider strange, it's usually with the prompting by online trolls. One of, if not the most disliked troll was Julie. Julie would get Chris to do all sorts of weird things, film them, then leak them online. But of all the horrible things Julie got Chris to do, the worst was make him fall in love with her. This is a uh, long distance love dedication to my girlfriend, Julie. Beautiful woman, beautiful woman. I love you, Julie, so very much. You are, you strike my thought at every moment. And it makes me, it makes me ponder with such love and desire. After announcing his love for Julie, she then revealed she wasn't who she said she was. Julie! 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 Person who posed to pretended to be an adult woman but yet was a little little brat. He was also known as with his alias Max and Blue Spike, but his real name is David. Don't know as much as his age, but he's at least 13 years old. Julie! Trolls convinced Chris to send them nude photos of himself, which of course he did, and then they were posted online. He would even give out his home address to trolls, showing just how easy it was to manipulate him. One troll even got him to fart on a cake, which he would later call the biggest regret of his life. It almost became a game. Who could make Chris say or do the craziest thing? And just so you know, the uh, previous video was also dedicated to a little girl who accidentally found the ED page. Her name was Shane Chong. Chris would get so angry by the trolling that seeing how angry he got became part of the appeal. This makes me really angry. <clears throat> <clears throat> You want me to calm down? You want me to calm down? You despite. You are so despicable, Clyde. Calling all trolls. Calling all trolls. You are at. We are at war. This is war. I will not stand idly by while you t take heed and, my, and curse my friends and my family. For you have dishonored me. And I will not stand for it. As I stand upon my native Cherokee heritage, 
I will I will hunt you down, you damn dirty trolls. Perhaps it was easy for Chris to be trolled a lot of the time because he was just so desperate to find love. He was, after all, on a love quest. Way back in college, Chris hung up posters and would walk around holding signs, saying how he was looking for a non-boyfriend girl. When the dean of the college told Chris he had to stop this, he used a magical attack on her. The attack would curse her with bad luck. Or so Chris thought. He then added her into his Sonichu comic as the main villain, an evil witch who wanted to stop Chris from finding love. Yes, Chris was desperate to find love, but he just didn't know how to go about it. He then met a girl named Megan at his local gaming store, and the two became friends, but Chris wanted more. However, any chance of that happening evaporated when Megan discovered drawings Chris had drew of the two of them together. Chris would even ask Santa for a girlfriend. And at Christmas present, that was supposed to be for the girlfriend that Santa brought. But unfortunately, she didn't show. And he seemed to be getting more and more frustrated as the years went on. Abstinence is nothing but crap. I mean, because if you got abstinence, then what, then what you get end up being an adult virgin. Or even worse, a senior citizen virgin. It's easy to have sympathy for Chris, with the trolls and him wanting to find love so desperately, but Chris is not just some helpless victim, always having bad things done to him. He does a lot of bad things himself. One of the more well-known incidents is when he went into a GameStop and pepper sprayed one of the employees because he was so angry that Sega had changed Sonic's arms from flesh-coloured to blue. Another time, Chris and his mother were both arrested after he hit a manager of a game store with his car, who had banned him from the store because he had been screaming at children. He once wrote a letter to President Obama asking the president to make gay adverts illegal. Now, for those who dare continue to mislabel me as dang gay, homosexual, or bisexual, I'm straight. I am straight. Only for the straight man. Yes. To the creators of uh, my favorite my favorite brand of uh, body spray, yes. apparently it has come to my attention that a uh, bunch of uh, people of the uh, wrong orientation are uh, using the uh, S brand, uh, and by which I mean particularly the uh, homosexuals. And thusly, a stereotype has been. Uh, has been made. If you if uh, has been made, apparently uh, has been made. Apparently, you'd be gay if you wore it. He sold his dad's stamp collection he left to him for eight hundred dollars to buy video games. A collection his father was extremely proud to leave him after his death, hoping that Chris would cherish them. Chris has even been caught shoplifting. So yes, Chris can be manipulated into doing stupid things but he can also need no prompting sometimes as well. And speaking of doing stupid things, Chris once set his house on fire. He left a coffee brewer plugged into the bathroom and it caught fire. Firefighters struggled to get into the home to tackle the blaze though, because the house was full of so much junk. And then the bathroom down here and pretty much the, this is pretty much the utility room with laundry and back door, which that too is blocked. So freaking cluttered in here. See, my father had to have narrow passageways. Anyway, yeah, uh, steps and um, more steps going up. Kitchen, very much locked off all over with the Resident Evil refrigerator right there. I use the term Resident Evil because in Japan, Resident Evil video game is called Biohazard. Much of the living room, as you can see above, to above this block, which essentially consists of footway through this narrow hallway, and this is my room, obviously. A lot more cleaner than it is now. A lot more cleaner than the rest of the house, actually, right now couch under that pile. Uh, no. Uh, 
Uh, dropping everything. It's so crowded in here. And behind this door frame is music room. Cluttered in there too. So yeah, I'm not too proud of the stay of the house. And Chris was no stranger to appearing on TV. ...is one of only about 100 winners nationally to receive $1,000 worth of Sega games and equipment. For his parents, it's just another example of how well he's doing. Christian is a high-functioning autistic child. This past fall, on his own initiative, he entered a contest based on a favorite cartoon character. What had to do was exactly what side the edge of a cartoon, and I'd listen to what side says at the end of it. And write it down for a whole week. The student body at UVA hosted a memorial service to honor the 49 victims who lost their lives at the nightclub in Orlando, Florida. This all unfolded on the steps of the rotunda along University Avenue. The two hour long event included an opportunity for people to create art and share their tributes. Do not hate. Hate is not so good. And to be paranoid is a, is a bust. Feel the love that comes from us and try to feel love that you can offer at least from within yourselves for yourselves. So that's a little on who Chris Chan is, but what about Oedipus? Who was he? Once upon a time in Thebes, there was a king named Laius and a queen named Jocasta, and their baby son Oedipus. King Laius had heard a prophecy that little baby Oedipus would one day grow up to kill him and marry Jocasta. So he decided to leave baby Oedipus to die on the side of a mountain, but a shepherd found him and took him to Corinth, where he was adopted by King Polybus and Queen Merope. One day when he was grown, the oracle of Delphi told Oedipus all about the prophecy that said he would murder his father and marry his mother. So he decided he had to leave Corinth. He headed for Thebes, but along the way he got into a fight with an old man, which ended with Oedipus killing him. The old man turned out to be King Laius, his father who had left him when he was just a baby. Unknowingly, he had fulfilled the first part of the prophecy. He carried on along his journey and then encountered a sphinx, who had been given the people of Thebes trouble. Oedipus swiftly defeated the sphinx by answering a riddle correctly. The people of Thebes were so relieved to have the Sphinx gone that they made Oedipus their new king, which meant he would marry the widow queen, Jocasta, his birth mother. They would go on to have four children and everything was going well, until a mysterious plague hit Thebes. The people wanted the king to put an end to the plague. The oracle told Oedipus that the only way to defeat this plague was to find King Laius' murderer and bring him to justice. When Oedipus started looking into the murder, he learns that King Laius had a servant with him on the day he died, and the servant managed to escape. So he sends for the servant to come and tell him the whole story. While he waits for the servant, a messenger shows up to tell Oedipus that his father, Polybus, is dead. Oedipus is happy because the prophecy now can't come true. He cannot murder his own father, if his father has died. He shares the news with everyone except the messenger, who brought the news of Polybus' death, and he happens to be the same man who found baby Oedipus on the mountain, so he knew that Polybus and Merope weren't really his parents. Jocasta realises what's happened and kills herself. The servant who had been with Laius arrives and confirms Oedipus is in fact the man who killed Laius. Oedipus realises the prophecy has been fulfilled. He goes to find Jocasta, only to find her lifeless, dead body. Grief-stricken, he stabs himself in the eyes, blinding himself. There are little things both Oedipus and Chris have in common. Oedipus dealt with a prophecy, and so did Chris. The prophecy which stated Chris was the chosen one in Quickville, the world in his Sonichu comic. They both set off on a quest, Oedipus to avoid something terrible, Chris to find love. 
but the most obvious way they compare is in their relationship with their mothers. Oedipus, though, did not actually know it was his mother when he married her and had children, but Chris did know it was her mother when she did what she did. I brushed her with care and caution, so I just gave her comfort and talked with her, and we just branched out slow and steady, and then I, I encouraged her positively, let her make the first move. She wanted to do it. And she oh, she did? Really? She made the first move? Yeah, I think she was partially confused at one point, but but then she came around, obviously. But Yes, Chris had allegedly been having a closer relationship with her mother than anyone could have predicted. Her mother, Barbara, is an elderly woman who suffers from dementia, and anyone who caught her cameo appearances in Chris's videos could tell she had been struggling for a while. Barbara and Weston, everybody! Say hello to the lovely folks out there! You're being streamed on live Twitch Network! So, what's going on with you, huh? Everybody wants to know! You're the big interview talk! Talk what's on your mind! I'm resting. And what are you doing with yourself? I'm entertaining myself. What do you like to eat? I like to eat fish and chicken. Mm. What do you like to drink? I like to drink uh, chocolate milkshake. And what kind of milkshakes are these? These are... Uh, meal replacement. Delicious. They're meal replacement shakes. Any other... You want to give some kind of supportive words to everybody like, you know... Um, like, I don't know... Y'all do well, y'all do good, learn well, be educated and everything, that sort of thing. Give us some wisdom. I don't know any right now. Come on. You have a lot of wisdom in your head. What are you doing to me? Be smart. Don't blame me. <laughs> Turn me loose what? I'm thirsty. Come on. Let me just say it once. Turn me loose. Turn me loose like you. If you're supposed to say turn me loose, you silly goose. Turn me loose, you silly goose. <laughs> you used to do that more flirtingly. Go. My name is Barbara Chandler. Here today we have four blankets, or one of them is the bed spread. Anyway, we would like for you to contact us through eBay and make a purchase of one of these blankets. Or all four of them. Or all, all of them, if you would like, uh, Barbara Chandler. I am autographing pictures to be sold on eBay. Thank you for buying. We appreciate it. Bye-bye. Wait, wait, wait. We tell them to buy the other things as well, aside from that. It will help us to uh, buy food for the rest of the month. <sighs> Thank you. And buy everything else from Christine Chandler on eBay. Thank you. Definitely the high-ticketed high items as well. Gee. Hello, my name is Barbara Chandler. I wish to wish Nicholas Cruz happy birthday. Yay! Please, can you buy Christine Chandler's uh, merchandise to help us pay the mortgage. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. And where do we buy this stuff from? Buy on eBay. Yeah, link below. Thank you. Anything else you want to say? No, that's all. Have a, have a good day. Thank you. Have a, have a good day. Why can't you say have a good day? Have a good day. Yay! How could this have happened? Who knows, we will have to wait until the trial to find out exactly what happened, and maybe we won't even find out then. So, what happened to Oedipus? There are different tellings of the story, one where he dies, and one where he lives out his days being cared for. What will happen to Chris? Who knows, maybe something similar, being put somewhere and being cared for. And just like the story of Oedipus, 
Maybe Chris would have had different versions of his story told in the future if not for the fantastic work done by Gino Samuel. All hail Gino Samuel! Even if Chris hasn't done what she says she did, how would she cope without her mother around? We will have to see if she did what she said, but if it comes out that it's true, then I bet most are just glad to have only heard about it, rather than see it take place. Because if Chris had filmed it, like he would often film things, and anyone saw it, I bet everyone would want to blind themselves. Just like Oedipus. Gosh darn it, I'm just so lonely. I wish I had some friends. Do not fear, Chris, for Snowflake is here. Misfits, assemble! Jason, you've pissed on the floor, you fat moron! Don't worry, Brad, just needs mopped. This is great! But I wish I had more friends. Then so it shall be. Hey Chris, I'm here to be your friend, and that's non-negotiable. Wow, the misfits and Jason Blaha? What's next? How about Richard Burgess? No way, I hate him. I order 66 him. Oh, come on, do not hate. Sure, Snowflake, bring him here. As you wish. <sighs> Does anybody want to debate me? Oh, Richard but is Vegan Gaines? Oh, I hate him. Will someone please get rid of him? Lenny? Arr. Smash. Arr. Oh! Looks like Vegan Gaines is blasting off again! Bing! Oh no. And if I'm ever discovered, I'll follow Longclaw's instructions and use my rings to escape to a new planet. A nice, safe little world filled only with mushrooms. Gross, smelly mushrooms.